So my name is Sasha Aldrich. I'm developer relations at Gelato. Uh, we are based in Switzerland, as I mentioned, and I'm here today to talk about account abstraction. As Vanina mentioned, account abstraction is all the rage these days. Um, and you know, I'm going to take it from a platform, a developer protocol type of perspective. So bear with me. You can disagree if you'd like, and please find me in the coffee break to discuss. I'd be glad to talk about with with the, talk with you about it more. All right. So here's the situation we have today, right? Most users interact with the blockchain with EOAs. So what's an EOA? It's an externally owned account, right? This is something external to the protocol, and for most people, that's MetaMask, right? And frankly, that UX sucks, right? You've got to have a private key, you've got to lose the private key, and then you've got to lose it another five times until you realize that you should probably not put it in an Apple note. And you know, this is just the situation we have today. It's baked into Ethereum's core protocol, and that's just, that's just where we're at. And you know, no offense here to Ambire at all. Uh, you guys have great tricks up your sleeve, and we try and help with that as well. But great smart contract wallets exist, Ambire being one of them, Argent, and our close friends at Gelato Safe. Um, but by the core protocol standards, they are second class citizens. Only EOAs can initiate transactions, right? So there has to be a whole suite of tricks uh, up Ambire's sleeve, for example, to get things smooth and working. And that's just not what we want to onboard the next billion people here, right? So very quickly, I'm sure most of you people know, but there are two types of accounts. EOA, smart contract. E EOA has an address, right, as you know, and smart contracts also have an address, but they have code at the account level, right, in their database. What we want to do with account abstraction is take these two and put them together, right? Make smart contract wallets the standard and give them these first class abilities. I, I mean, ideally to initiate transactions, but as you'll see, even in the account abstraction proposals in Ethereum, that's not even the case, right? So if we're going to talk about account abstraction, let's label down the benefits that we want for the next billion people to be onboarded, right? So first up is signature abstraction, right? At the moment, we only have one type of signature in Ethereum, right? It's baked into the core protocol, and that's great, good for security, but what if we want to use different signatures, right? People always harp on about quantum computers. I'm quite bearish myself as an ex-physicist, but you know, one day we might need quantum safe signatures, right? Or you might want higher security signatures or lower security signatures, or how about no signatures at all? Right? Maybe it's some super lightweight app, right? That doesn't need time wasted on signatures. Up next, we got gas. Gas is a super pain point uh, in, in the UX of crypto in general. And how about paying for gas in ERC-20s? Or how about paying for gas how about getting someone else to pay for gas for you built into the protocol, right? And onboarding users through sponsoring, for example, right? I mean, that's one of the biggest pain points that I feel that crypto has is just having the chicken and egg problem using centralized exchanges and you know all the bad rep that they get these days, and rightly so. Uh, that just it'd be great if we could actually have an ability to abstract gas away. So what we got next? We got nonce. Nonce abstractions. In the moment, nonce is a pretty linear, right? This is just a way to keep track of the transactions you have on your account. They just go from zero, one, two, and up. But what about if you have different types of transactions? Maybe in the smart contract wallet, you do an ERC-20 transaction, and you want to have a, a, a certain nonce for that ERC-20 transaction that's separate, right? There might be actual use cases for that. Or you might just not want a nonce at all, right? And finally, this is also a mega pain point, is network abstraction, right? We live in this world. I mean, Gelato supports 15 plus EVM chains at this point. It'd be great if you could just go on the front end, click the network you want, and never have to worry about it again, right? You not have to switch the network, not, if, God forbid you have to add the network and see the RPC thing, and yeah, let's not, let's not talk about it. Let's get rid of networks and just leave, accept that we have this multi-chain EVM world, right? So that's what we add up to account abstraction. So very briefly, I mean, account abstraction has been on the, on the horizon for Ethereum basically since the beginning, right? 2015, Ethereum was founded. 2016, there's already a proposal, right? And there's many different things between 2016 and 2020, but uh, please check out this great article. I've got a link there below by Ismail from Argent. It has a really good, concise explainer of all of them. But you know, there's been proposals and upon proposals upon proposals, and they're all retired now, right? Because they all require core protocol changes. And the hot new favorite at the moment is ERC-4337. How many of you have heard of 4337? Excellent. See, that's quite a lot of people, right? So really is the hot favorite. Um, the thing is, um, I won't go into the details for this presentation, but the idea of ERC-4337 very quickly is that it uses an alternative mempool. <sighs> you know, I used to be scared when I saw the word mempool, especially if you had alternative on the front. But um, 
the, the idea is basically it's just a new way of including transactions in a separate mempool on behalf of a user, right? Um, they have a special object. You send in, uh, someone can send in on your behalf a special object which says, oh, deploy a smart contract wallet for them and do everything in one go. Okay, well, that requires adoption uh, and a lot of adoption. Uh, you as developers have to go and follow the very long and tedious 4337 proposal, find all the exact standards, match the new RPC methods for bundlers and the new mempool and listen to the APIs for that and do this and do that. And it, like, it's a great idea and it's great people working on it, um, but it's not actually an end-to-end -end solution for account abstraction. Now, what do I mean by an end-to-end -end solution? Well, as I mentioned, the core of ERC4337 is just an alternative way of including transactions where actually a user might not need an EOA anymore. Uh, they might send, they might say they want to talk to the blockchain and someone on your behalf can send in this new object, this mempool, and that will deploy a wallet for you and so on and so forth. And actually like a lot of people you might see on Twitter or whatever, you know, a lot of people just kind of take at face value that as soon as we get ERC4337, accounts are abstracted. Whereas that's not actually the case, right? You, uh, wallets would have to adopt it, everyone would have to listen to this new mempool, and actually ERC4337, like most proposals, is very sparse. It doesn't have a smart contract wallet in it, it just says you guys can do that. Uh, so actually the accounts wouldn't be immediately abstracted, right? So my, the complication is that currently there are no end-to-end -end solutions for developers like yourself to easily leverage the power that we want from account abstraction, those ones I mentioned before, today, right? So what can we do about that? Let's take a step back, we're all here in Denver, enjoying the good vibes, right? And Web3 is one of those places that really has some absolutely great projects, right? People building amazing tech, right? And just getting it done. That's just, that's just no one can argue with that, right? We've got great tech, and we've got great builders. It's like, like the people yourself here. So let's, at Gelato, we asked ourselves a few months ago when we were designing this, how can we take these building blocks and stand on the shoulders of giants, right? And actually take this through to great account abstraction using the available tools we have today as building blocks to actually give you an end-to-end -end solution for account abstraction. So the main question is, what tools do we need to provide you guys, uh, to developers, for them to bring account abstraction to their users today? Not next year when 4337 finally goes live or whatever, or maybe it'll become like the merge and we'll wait another seven years. But what, what can we do to bring it to you guys today? And to break that down, maybe we can e go even one step lower. What are the needed building blocks? So, straightforwardly, what, what, what do we start with? We need a smart contract wallet for every user who wants to interact with the blockchain. That's pretty straightforward. On top of that, we need someone, because EOAs, even in 4337 land, still are the only ones who can initiate transactions, we need a third party to send and pay for transactions on behalf of each user. So if a user wants to interact with the blockchain and they uh, send a request through, someone has to handle the gas and stuff for them. We need a way for the user to pay that person, because there's no free lunch, right? We're not just gonna send your transactions and pay for your gas for you, right? We need to be able to pay, the user to be able to pay in a nice way, right? Not in a top up 17 networks and, and then send it to some smart contract wallet, that kind of just defeats the point. And finally, we need an interface to show the user's assets. And together, when we put these together, we can maybe actually get developers account section today. So on the interface part, Oh, sorry, on the bottom part, sorry. So first of all, we at Gelato are good friends with SAFE, and we were founded uh, in the co-working space with SAFE. They gave us our first grant, and um, we decided to use SAFE, but you know, the one I'm about to show you later works with any smart contract wallet. It would work with Ambire, it would work with Argent, anything. Finally, we have built a relayer. relayer Gelato Relay has been up for almost two years now, and you know, we offer some of what we think are pretty cool features, but you, know, you can decide for yourself and this will be the person to pay for, the third party to pay for the transactions. Finally, we have Gelato One Balance, which I'll explain in a little bit more detail later, but as the name suggests, very imaginative naming, but you have One Balance, and you can pay for all your transactions across all chains when you talk to us, but I'll show you properly later. And finally, the interface, well, this is where our new project, the Gasless Wallet SDK, comes in. 
So this here, I'll start off by just giving you the benefits first so you get that in your head. So Gasless Wallet is multi-chain out of the box, right? We support 15 plus networks. If you use the SDK, you don't have to worry about it. All you gotta do is say, say which chain ID you need to use. It has this built-in sponsoring, which I'll show you in a moment, where you can literally just uh, top up one balance and all 15 chains are covered with immediately. So that abstracts the networks away as well. Gelato was originally a keeper network. We're one of the original keeper networks. Um, so automation is what we do. And so in this wallet, you can have native automation built straight into your uh, smart contract interactions. Atomic transactions, of course, something that's also very useful, doing multiple transactions in one go. And you'll see a demo of this in a second. Um, this, is of, this is built straight in with a smart contract wallet. And finally, the last two, uh, last but not least, are probably the most important, right? Social recovery and key rotation. And actually, if we step through this list, so Gelato Relay gives us multi-chain, One Balance gives us sponsoring, Automate gives us automation, uh, Safe gives us the atomic transactions, and we use Web3 Auth in this stack to uh, allow for social login, which I'll show in a second. All right, as I mentioned, Gelato Relay, we got Maker, we got Connext, recently Renault used us for their NFT minting. Uh, we have millions of transactions in the bank and high reliability, so that kind of kind of could hope that you guys could believe that you can trust us to relay your transactions. Most importantly, Gelato Relay handles the transaction inclusion pipeline in the background. Now, what does that mean? If you remember 4337 is an alternative way of handling transactions, right? Well, actually, this flexibility, because you just send through a Web2 request, basically a, a request body saying what chain, what target address, what function you want to call, and so on. This gives you the flexibility in the back end to actually give you different options, right? So Gasless Wallet will support the alternative mempool out of the box on the first day, because what we are doing is we're doing the transaction for you. You just send us a Web2 request and we get it on chain for you. You never even have to talk to the chain. So we can support the standard mempool. We already support flashbots for MEV protection on mainnet. Uh, we can support the alternative mempool and our API is immediately multi-chain, right? So this is all out of the box. So I mentioned one balance. You can go to this link if you're interested. Um, so one balance, very nice. Uh, one balance is a way to top up. At the moment you top up on uh, USDC on Polygon on a dashboard. And this way any request you send to us to include a transaction uh, will be deducted from that one balance. Amazing, right? Uh, but so basically any chain, Ethereum, Polygon all the way down to like Moonbeam, there's probably like three users on Moonbeam, but we support it. Um, you can, everything will be deducted from that one balance, right? So you don't have to worry about anything, and that gives you an ability, in case you're interested, to sponsor your users' transactions as well. So if you want to top up, and we have many customers who do this, if you want to top up uh, one balance with 1,000 USDC and basically just offer the call on your front end, gas is abstracted away, right? You're, you're using a relayer, you don't have to worry about having 15 uh, balances and so on, and that's how we end up there. Um, yep, so I'll show you a quick demo. And those are the links if you want to go check them out yourself. Gasless demo, gasless vid. Okay. No, no luck. It's always risky to do a demo, isn't it? Aha, perfect. I see, I have to look at this backwards. Okay. So you can go check out the link. Um, basically, what, what we're doing here, I'll walk you through it, is I'm logging in with Discord. This is powered by Web3 Auth. There you go, I'm logging in. This is a super simple example where basically the, 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 we're interacting with a counter contract on chain. We're just incrementing a counter. So once that logs in, you'll see a couple of things. You'll see an EOA address. This is the address that Web3 Auth has deployed for you. I'm switching it to base girly, just a little flex. We're a launch partner of base, so just, you know, weird flex, but okay. And then uh, we're gonna have a smart wallet here, right? Notice that it says not deployed yet. I'm gonna click increment, and using Relay, from that EOA with one balance funding in the background, it's gonna go ahead and deploy a smart contract wallet on your behalf, and then interact with the target contract all in one click, right? There's the counter has increased, and this is just the Relay API returning us some information, and here is the success 
I think I try and go in some logs and stuff, but unless anyone can read raw hex code like Vitalik, I don't think this means that much, so. All right, so how does it work? Walk through very quickly. So you saw that EOA. So Web3 off, when you log in with an email, generates you an EOA. And you saw the, the social login, Google, Twitter, Discord. I don't think anyone logs in with Facebook, but knock, knock yourself out if you still do that. Um, and what we use is we use create two. So this is a deterministic deployment. So you remember it's one click and it will deploy the contract for you and then interact with the contract with the target function. Well, we need a deterministic deployment. We need to know the address of the smart contract wallet before it's deployed in order to talk through that chain. So that uses the handy create two opcode and that's handled by the gasless wallet SDK. So I've been yapping out about that for a while, but what is actually, what, what, what do you get with gasless wallet SDK? You can see a link in the end for the docs, but basically this is the bread and butter. Send transaction to data value, right? So the two is obviously the target address. The data will be the function and the arguments you want to talk to, the function selector, and value will be like message.value for your smart contract devs if you want to pay in the same transaction as well. So Gelato Relay will take this request and push it through your safe, through your safe smart contract wallet that's been handled for you. Remember, you don't have to care about it at all. You just had a social login that handles it for you. You don't have to worry about it. Of course, it's Web3 off, so you can get your private key if you're interested in that. And it will send it over to your to address, right, to your to contract. So that is the gasless wallet SDK. And the question, if you remember, was what, how can we provide developers with account objection today? And the answer, it, may, it might not be gasless wallet SDK, but we definitely gave it a stab, you know? Basically, you can get, in, in one click, your users can get, use email or social login immediately and immediately have a smart contract wallet deployed for them have a way of topping up with one balance. You can do that on their behalf. You can read the docs for more information about that. And it's immediately multi-chain, immediately a contract, uh, immediately a wallet for the user without them having to worry about it. And because smart contract wallets are great, like Ambire, you can add modules, you can add or remove features. And so that's, that's, why we have, that's what we think is a good attempt at answering that question. We have bounties for if Denver, so please check out the links. Oops, my bad. There we go. We have bounties for East Denver, so at Gasless Bounties, and hit me up in the Discord if you want to go. I'm pretty much there all the time, and you can find me around. I'm also at the mentor desk most times here these first few days. Basically, we have some bounties. Please feel free. This is a super alpha product. Please feel free to try and uh, break it or <laughs> incorporate it in your product, uh, in your project. We'd be glad to help, and it would be really cool to get your feedback on it as well. So that is everything. My name is Sasha Aldrich on Telegram, Twitter, Discord. Very imaginative, I know it's my name. And um, yeah, thank you very much for listening and thank you, Ambaya, for inviting me today.